All right, guys. Hey, guys. So uh, I'm going to try to make this as short and sweet as possible. Uh, so I've got an apology to make to everyone, really. First and foremost, I do want to say that I love you guys. Because uh, I made a pretty big mistake. Yesterday, I published a tutorial video on how to download a collection of mods and install them automatically. My aim was to make modding really easy and accessible to everyone, like even people who are like, inexperienced and haven't like modded before. Because I remember like that's what used to hold me back. It's my life. Like every single day, I get to wake up and chase my dreams and follow my passions. And that's all been made possible by you guys. So thank you guys for everything that you've done for me and all the opportunities and memories that you've allowed me to create. Now, my connection to CSGO Lotto. I use ModDrop's client and I've also been working with Ultimate Immersion and the developers of ModDrop to make this possible because I really wanted this to work. So in my excitement of being able to give my whole fan base my mod list, I made the assumption that I could credit all the authors of the mods I was going to share with you guys, um, like just, by crediting them by putting their links in the mod pack to their Nexus page mods. And I showed everyone in the video where it was and I thought, okay, that's enough. But clearly like that was just wrong. I made a massive mistake there. Like that, that wasn't the right thing to do. So obviously I upset a lot of mod creators and I had no intention of doing that. You guys, you, you put so much hard work into this and I, I didn't give you guys like the credit it deserved. Like you, most of you apparently, so I should be linking you people to the Nexus, telling them to download the mods. I, I just really wanted to like automate the whole installation process and make it easy. I I would just, I think I was very naive and didn't really understand it from your point of view. So I'm, I'm very sorry. Like I clearly, I just didn't think. I mean, you guys know from my stance on like Bethesda and the creation club, I think modders should get paid way more than they do but there's to pay them as contractors then they take 100 percent of the sales that actually take place on the creation club i always say go and actually support the mod developer if you like their work you know go over to the nexus and donate to them you know i always preach this stuff and i ended up like doing the wrong thing completely so i've made my video unlisted and taken down the mod pack so you guys can't download it anymore i'm sorry for any damage I cause in that regard and if anyone's disappointed because they can't download it now you know I think I think it's fair I'm gonna you know maybe make another mod list properly and tell people to go to the nexus and actually go and download the mods and I'll do a tutorial on how to Thus I clothe my naked villainy with old odd ends stolen forth from holy writ and seem a saint when most I play the devil oh, please have mercy oh not tonight bishop not tonight. The modern community is under attack. It might seem alarmist or extremist, but once again, another scandal has shaken the foundation of the modding community. And when I look at modding, I see it as the shining tower on the hill, or is it the shining city on the hill? But that city, or kingdom, is as fragile as glass. The modding community itself has brought endless levels of enjoyment, content, and creativity in an industry that has grown stagnant over the years. Developers and video game publishers who are now corpulent on the profits of mediocre storylines and gameplay elements, living off of hype, buzzwords, and 4K, VR, and so on and so forth, reoccurring customers. The mod author is the last bastion of hope, freedom, creativity, and most of all, free content. Donating to a modder, even if it's a little bit of money, is a sign of camaraderie, I feel. Because I can honestly say the modding community is the only reason I got back into gaming. If it wasn't for Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim on PC, I would have been done with gaming when I built my PC for editing videos and for music and such this channel wouldn't exist. The modding community, as I said before, is a kingdom as fragile as glass because there's always something that can go wrong. We've got piracy issues that seem to always pop up and every time it's worse than the last. We now have the creation club and I know I'm going to lay off the creation club now because I have a bigger fish to fry at the moment, but that'll be a different day. And mod drop. 
Mod Drop, some of you may know if you watch MXR, ESO, or whoever else is big, I don't know, uh, Ultimate Immersion. These people are some of the bigger names. They have a huge following, especially MXR and ESO. This was brought to my attention not too long ago by a modder in the community that they have been pretty much plugging this website and it was completely and utterly erroneous. It was a site of mischievous makings. It's obviously made to profit off of modders, to steal their mods. There's so much rigmarole involved in this garbage that it's disgusting. And the deeper you dig into this rabbit hole, you find that it's been going on since 2011 because the site was originally called Gmod. Geiler, I believe, started this. He's probably one of the heads, one of the CEOs, whatever. It's also owned by Olympus Games. Now there's so much here, there's so many derivatives, there's so many different points. It's like a tree and there are many branches. I spent the past two days going back on Reddit post and Nexus post as far as 2011. Now originally Gmod was conceived by Skyler, particularly because the name was chosen to catch on all the craze that Gary's mod was getting. Obviously, you think Gmod, you think Gary's mod. Once again, another little sneaky tactic to sort of get people interested. From what I was reading at the time, the site was poorly implemented and not very easy to navigate and the URL was nothing impressive. Flash forward to 2014, when Mod Drop becomes a thing. It flew under the radar for a while, but it hasn't been until recent times. I'd say December 23rd of 2017, where Eleonora came out on her Facebook page and informed people that she would be hiding her mods from the Nexus within some hours and would explain later. Now, I didn't know about this at the time, but I did notice while going through my load order and cleaning up my mods and turning off mods I wasn't using and updating mods, that a lot of Eleonora's mods were blocked. They were hidden. And there were other modders whose mods were hidden. I was confused as to what the hell was going on. But I figured, eh, I guess like it has to be fixed or there's a bug, something major, whatever. It wasn't until someone in the modding community reached out to me and told me what was up with this mod drop. Five months ago on Reddit, Robbie wrote, Mod drop is a proposed service being created by a known and proven content thief. Sky, who has been banned from the Nexus, possibly more than once. Modrop stole mods, uploaded them to his site, and it's even been supposedly said that Skylar has done this himself, proving how much of a douche he is. Monetizing the site and turning a profit off of the revenue. He did this repeatedly in spite of requests from content creators to have this stuff removed or not be used at all. There are tons of posts on the Nexus where he attempted to I don't know what the fuck he was thinking, but it was probably one of the most poorly implemented attempts at getting in the good graces of everyone. This goes as far back as once again, 2011, August 31st, Gmod content policy and content index system. Essentially, Gmod is mod drop now. If you go to this thread post, you will find 26 pages of people basically telling this guy what he's doing is wrong. They weren't interested and they did not want their mods uploaded onto a site. Obviously, this all fell on deaf ear. He also pulled that sort of rigmarole where, you know how EA tried to put out that, remember that Reddit post that got really downvoted and he gave that sort of customer service answer like, oh, well, the modders can come to the site and sign in and create their account and then have their stuff removed if they don't want it there. What type of shit is this? He even got as far as to upset Dark One. He originally tried to present his case for that the site should be able to just piggyback off of the Nexus's servers to get mods or something like that. Whereas to Dark One obviously was not happy with it. They even gave them the suggestion of why don't you have links to the download page, leading people to go directly to the Nexus to download the mod. So Skylar comes back and pretty much says that it wouldn't be very user friendly. It would force people to jump through extra hoops to click on additional download pages and so on and so forth. Of course, nobody gives a shit because essentially it's bandwidth leeching. Then Dark One comes back and says you want to use the index of the Nexus site to populate your own database and take files from Dark One's download servers, the Nexus, so he could use them to circumvent going to the Nexus altogether, meaning it would get zero traffic to the Nexus. What's the point of this to just give this guy all this stuff that is like 
The Nexus did all the work and this guy wants to come in and basically try and Steve Jobs it thinking I'll just come up with my own little thing and you guys will let me just take whatever I want and I'll take all the credit and get ad revenue and get paid for doing absolutely nothing. This did not sit well with obviously the Nexus. Someone also comes in at Ironman that said that server costs are not low. I think at the time it was like $100,000. If I read it wrong, please forgive me. I've been reading pages and pages and pages. So basically what happened after that was they did it anyway. They basically tried to server leech the Nexus. They blocked them. What did Skyler do? He found a workaround for it. And I think he got blocked again or his site got blocked. They even go as far as stealing from other websites. Like this isn't just a Nexus issue. Someone called Zed informed the Nexus back in July of 2011 that they were a regular on Runic Games forum and a Runic Games fan site. They found out that someone came down there, downloaded every mod, and then started putting it up, of course, on Gmod, which Gmod is now Mod Drop. So it is a long, sordid history of just pure scummery. And I know this does seem a bit scattered. So back to Gmod slash Mod Drop. I should just call it Mod Drop. Skyler then creates accounts for authors on his site and then demands that the authors claim their work in order for the mods to be removed. And even when modders did this, the mods weren't removed. It's also been found that the customer service is either severely lacking a bot or a complete and utter joke. It's kind of amazing the balls this guy has. And yet, I'll give him this. The site does look interesting. It's a very flashy site, and I think that's the move. They create this website. They leech bandwidth off of other sites. They steal mods. Basically, their new game plan is to steal mods, upload them on their site, and align themselves with bigger modder YouTubers to get people to go to this site to download these mod packs and so on and so forth against a lot of the modders' wishes. There's so many pages I've read where people don't want this their mods on this thing and they just do it anyway. And the sad fact of the matter is MXR is promoting this. ESL promoted it. He recently gave an apology that, honest to God, seemed like it was on the level of T. Martin. I was I watched a few seconds of it and I turned it off. I was like, this is pathetic. You should know better if you're that into the modding community. You know? You should know better. Like, if you are a modder, if, if this site came to me, I would have looked at it and I would have contacted modders I knew that were personal friends. And I would have said, what the fuck is the deal of this? Like, they're asking me to do this and that for them. And I would have gotten the skinny. I would have found out about it and said to fuck with this. Honestly, inside information from the modding community, it is believed in the modder's form that uh, these YouTubers, Ultimate Immersion, ESO and MXR are somehow sponsored. They are obviously sponsored by ModDrop, but it's believed that they're getting paid for it. Now there's no proof to say that they're getting paid for it, but why bother aligning yourself with this site with this long history of Skylar being a complete and utter mod thief who's been banned from the Nexus numerous of times, has done completely dishonest and disingenuous things that hurt the community as a whole. There are even modders who stop supporting PC altogether and are focusing on only putting up their mods on Xbox. This is something that is creating an issue. It's creating distrust in the community. And frankly, the mod community lives and dies by the trust of the community itself. Why would anyone still be aligned with this? Why didn't anyone defend it? Unless there's some sort of gain. Something is being gained to be with this mod drop. There's no other way about it. Because if they came to me after all of this and said, we want to sponsor you, I'd tell them to go fuck themselves. ESO did apologize, like I said before, about his video. But uh, I'm also being told that his video is just set to private. I think it's still viewable because I've just recently seen it. I was given a link to it. So he didn't delete it, which is weird that he wouldn't just get rid of that video for it just being a site where he's not getting paid or anything. Why not just go, obviously this has left a bad taste in people's mouths, delete it. Even on the Discord, uh, currently Mod Drop is accusing the Nexus of trying to besmirch its character and leading a smear and spamming campaign against them. The Nexus doesn't have to do anything to you. You've done it to yourself. Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. As I stated before, trust is the backbone of the modding community. And due to recent events, some modders are focusing only on Xbox. I'm being told a number of modders are now going to have a permission thing on their mod pages. Meaning that there will be YouTubers who will be blacklisted from doing videos or covering their work. 
And the ones that I know that are going to be blacklisted are Ultimate Immersion, ESO, Juice Head, and MXR. This is all inside information being given to me. I respect that. The modders have every right to do so. Every single right. The question is, will MXR even pay attention? Because MXR doesn't seem to give a shit. Now, I'm just going to maybe bring to your attention a scandal that happened a couple months ago. You may not have known about it because it kind of got swept under the rug and MXR's community kind of tried to bully. There was a mod called The Floating Market by Tarshana. And when I say bully, uh, the mod author got death threats and a lot of people who were involved in her mod also... Goddamn dog. And a lot of people who were involved in her mod also got nasty messages and were harassed. The way it was explained to me is the fact that the mod author contacted MXR and said, I would like you to take down the video with my mod in it. Um, because if I recall correctly from what I'm told, there was a lot of stuff that was hidden in the mod that the mod author wanted people to discover themselves. You know, little Easter eggs, some storyline sort of crap, I understand. Uh, MXR spoiled those, apparently. So the mod author contacted him a few times, couldn't get a hold of him, all right? And then when she finally did, she told him, I would like you to remove my part from the video, which as a video editor myself, nine times out of 10, I still keep a copy of what I uploaded for a week, just in case I need to change something or someone goes, I'd like you to get rid of something here, you know? Just in case. It's not that hard to rip your own video from YouTube and then chop out that one snippet. What was the big deal? MXR refused. So she used a... Uh, DMCA takedown or something on his YouTube page to get the video taken down. Then everything escalated like crazy. There are two sides to the story. There are the people who are in MXR's camp, which is a whole shit ton of people. He's big on YouTube. The guy could do no wrong. I mean, let's face it. Whenever someone's big on YouTube, they have a sort of following that will do whatever the fuck it takes to protect them. PewDiePie, MXR, uh, who else? Uh, even Dark Side Phil. I mean... Look at T. Martin and Pro Syndicate. These two guys lied to their fan base, made $37 million lying to their fans in rigging CSGO lottery matches to make a shit ton of money in videos. And they walk away with a slap on the wrist. And now if you say anything about these two assholes ripping people off and lying to them, the fan base tells you to fuck off and get over it. So long story short, it gets real ugly. Uh, she continued to get death threats and harassment, like major. So much so she had her mod removed from the Nexus. From what I'm told, she had her mod taken down to give the Nexus mod, like, managers, ironic, the, the Nexus admins a break from constantly having to ban and delete people who just showed up on her page to send her death threats. As I said, there's two sides to the story. There's some people who are saying she was completely in the wrong. If some of the things I've read are true about her wanting MXR's entire YouTube page taken down because of the floating market debacle, I don't agree with that at all. You know, let's just get that out there right now. It's a real sordid mess, and frankly, the only person who's walking away without a scratch is MXR. All he had to do was delete a video. I mean, that's all. He could have deleted the video, and it was sponsored, by the way, by guess who, most likely. He could have deleted the video and just put it back up, cut that part out, Bing, bang, boom. I've had people say that to me before. Big whoop. Big fucking whoop. I would have done it in an instant. If someone came to me and was like, oh, uh, you ruined this and that in my mind, could you delete this uh, part from your video? Sure. Fuck it. You send me a personal email. I don't give a shit. Whatever. I got bigger fish to fry in my day. So that's why MXR is definitely on a lot of blacklists coming up very soon. Um, I doubt it will really affect him because as I said before, MXR doesn't seem to give a shit. He's big enough to the point on YouTube where he just does whatever he pleases and he has like a big enough following where people will cover his ass and follow, like, you know, defend him to the nines. You get big enough on YouTube, you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want and your community will save your ass. Unlike me, sometimes my community calls me a faggot. As I stated before, this creates resentment in the mod community. An understandable resentment from mod authors. Because at times it seems like the only people not allowed to make money off of their mods are mod authors. Whether they're being coerced into something with Steam. Where most of the money was divvied up between Bethesda and Steam. Whether it's the Creation Club. Where it's a one-time payment and then whatever Bethesda makes afterwards is Bethesda's money. And you could be happy with your pittance in all honesty. Yes, I know... Creation Club has some prominent modders singing its praises, but would you really bite the hand that feeds you? 
I mean, could you really put much stock in a positive Creation Club interview of a modder on the Creation Club Bethesda site itself? I mean, why don't I go to Fox News to get all my information on Republicans or CNBC for all my information on the Democrats? Because it's a one-sided argument. It's bias. I don't think modders are allowed to have Patreon. Some do anyway. And it's barely okay for most of them to get donations, which I find to be ridiculous. I didn't know Bethesda had that sort of thing on them. I'll have to look deeper. This is what I'm just being told. And that's sad, really. Because without modders, what would PC gaming be without them? Some of the best stuff on PC has come from those few individuals with a passion for gaming. As I said before, modders truly are the last bastion. They are, because it's a group of people who are creating stuff because they genuinely give a shit. They're doing it in their free time. They're doing it in between work and school. They're doing it in between jobs because it's something they genuinely care about. Whereas to developers and publishers, they're honestly at this point doing it for money. Who are we kidding? The gaming industry is becoming as bloated as the music industry was at its prime. It's as bad as the movie industry. We're dealing with a time and a day and an age where a game comes out and if it actually changes something, all the other companies copy the formula. And before you know it, we have a thousand different derivatives with the same thing until we become sick of it because they're so stagnant for new ideas. They're so fearful of creativity or doing something outlandish or new because they always want to focus on making money. Whereas to modders focus is sharing with you their passion, their armor that they cared about they sat they designed they dreamed about they thought about all day and brought it to life in 3d max or whatever other platform they use or software forgive me as i never have a script i go from the hip as they say this video has been far too long and i feel that i've been all over the place with my bullet points and i apologize so i'll try and wrap this up very quickly currently olympus games who owns gmod slash mod drop is looking for mod developers to join their site because nobody wants to host their stuff there. Good luck with it, especially since all the modders speak to each other and know exactly who's running this and who's behind all these shenanigans. They have no chance in hell. It has been proven that ModDrop has tried leeching off the Nexus services and monetizing an index system that indexes Nexus mods. Also, they pushed some kind of Stardew Valley mod manager under the mod drop umbrella that was removed from the Nexus after they refused to talk to Robin about it and after their past violations and their unwillingness to communicate, which led to its removal. It also included works from Loot, which is against site regulations and copyright violations. More content theft. The whole situation is highly shady. And as Robbie said, I certainly cannot support someone like that stealing the work of others. People stealing the work of other people and then profiting off of it completely 100% wrong. ModDrop also allows people to go on the site without any verification and upload and share files however the hell they like. There is also no limitation to the files uploaded, which means DLLs and EXE files that potentially contain viruses can be uploaded and it can install outside data, for example. Now, as I said before, the ESO thing, because it gets good. This is not a move for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. The popular YouTuber ESO uploaded 130 mods to ModDrop, including many mods that have closed permission. He did not have permission to do this, and he did not contact the mod authors before doing this. With his long standing in the community, he should have known that this violates the rights given to the mod authors by law and honored by Bethesda. But apparently he decided to turn a blind eye to ethics and law. As I said before, he took down his mod pack from Mod Drop, and then it went back up. Now, as it says here in this red post, I'm reading to you right now by Thalassa. And you'll see a spot X'd out, updated. The mods have been taken down by ESL and Mod Drop, has said that they removed the mod pack sharing feature. Spoke too soon. You can still download MXR and ESL's mod packs, images from Dog Toothing, the same guy who made the list of everything in these packs on Friday. As far as I know, the mod drop has not had a chance to respond to DMCA requests regarding the mods that were just uploaded here. So far, they have been good about honoring them. So I suspect that this will end peacefully, but that's not really the point. 
they intentionally created a system that encouraged mod theft and have publicly stated that they don't think it's a problem. It shouldn't be up to the mod authors to continuously have to worry about filing DMCAs and protecting their rights. There should be protection against mods with closed permission being uploaded to ModDrop. And that's why we are where we are now. If you want a legal ethical alternative to ModDrop, please check out ModPicker. It has all the advantages of community sourcing of mod lists, but still have to actually go to the Nexus and read the mod description and honor the author of all of these amazing creations we use. Of course, building your own mod list directly is always the best option. As always, remember subreddit rules and so on and so forth. And I guess I should probably cut it here because it's so big. If you want, most likely I will put links to everything I've come across so far. There's so much more you can find on your own. Eleonora has put her mods back up on the Nexus ever since ESO apologized. I don't know if she has hidden them again or something. I don't know what's up. Probably not because she's, I recall reading somewhere her saying she didn't want to punish other people for uh, the mistakes of others. So I don't know where that stands considering that ESO stuff is right back up. And I will now just put it to you like this. Mod drop is the G2A of modding. Do not support mod drop at all. Don't use it. Don't check it out. Spread the word that mod drop basically steals from modders. And remember, all we have in this community is our camaraderie and our trust. That is the backbone of everything here. If the modders cannot trust the community, then they have no incentive to create free content for us. They have no incentive to make mods and share them. Sure, they can make mods, show them off in the pictures, and everybody goes, hey, I really liked it in the game. And then they can tell you to go, well, it sucks to suck. Maybe you shouldn't have let mod drop steal my stuff or other pirated sites, etc. To the YouTubers that have supported this, who I highly doubt give a flying fuck what I have to say. I have like 30k subs. I'm nothing to them. Um, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> I mean, really? What were you thinking? Especially if your channel was built on mods. If your channel is built on mods, it should be your utmost responsibility to comply with the mod office creations, to have a good representation in the community, and to protect the community. We're all in it together. If you are swayed by money or some other bobble they could have possibly interest anyone with, I don't know what your soul is worth, but it must not be worth much to do something that would jeopardize the modding community, to the, the creators. And I know I've had people actually come on my YouTube page and go, oh, all you do is suck the dicks of modders. And I told the guy to go fuck himself. You know what? Because modders have given me more shit for free than game developers. How the hell can you, like, say something shitty towards modders who give you free fucking content, but you can sit there with a doughy eyed look in your face and be fine with everything EA and Activision are doing? There you go. That's where your money goes. You pay these motherfuckers for the, the game, then you pay for the expansion packs and all this other bullshit, and what do they give you? They piss in your fucking eye and tell you to give them your wallet. And you hold out a glass and you catch it up and go, today's lemonade's pretty sweet. But then you get a guy like me who just basically says his admiration for the work of people doing something for his ass for fucking free, and you shit on him. You're the type of person who probably shits on your mother who takes care of you or gives you a place to live or something and talk about what a dumb bitch she is. And meanwhile, the motherfucker that doesn't give a fuck about you across the street you think is awesome. Or some girl that tells you you're a cuck. Oh, Stacy's so funny. I think she likes me. Oh, my God. I know, Choochie. I apologize. I flew off the handle. I really did. And I apologize. I gotta work on my anger issues. Um, I am with the modders. I'll put it like that. I am 100% with the modders. I've been treated extremely well by many modders in the Nexus. They made me feel welcome. A lot of them made me feel like I wasn't just some douchebag on YouTube. They made me feel like I was a person. They took the time to reply to me, explain mods. Some of them let me test some stuff that still hasn't even come out yet, and I don't know if it will come out. I certainly hope it will. I wish I could talk about some of the stuff I've had access to. And fuck, man. I don't know what to say. Like, I would really go out of my way to help any modder that has contacted me to check out their mods. There's only one mod that I have been contacted to look at and do a piece on that I couldn't. Actually, there's two. Uh, the first one was like this looks preset from a guy whose name I can't remember. I don't think English was his first language. I couldn't get it to work on my Fallout. 
and the guy who made The Devil's Pit in Witcher 3. Every time I try to get it going, like, the game just crashes. I have to keep removing stuff. I haven't figured out yet what I'm doing wrong. But one of these days when I finally figure out how to get the Devil's Pit to run, I'm going to do a piece on that because I said I would. And I like the mod author stuff and I was flattered that he even cared enough to ask me to like give some sort of coverage to his mod. Or hers. I could be wrong because it does have an avatar of a woman. <sighs> uh, thank you for your time as this isn't my usual fare for videos. This isn't very funny. This isn't very cute. Maybe I'll try and work in a video of the dog somehow. It's just a, a call to arms. Avoid mod drop. To hell with them and uh, remember to support your modders and remember sometimes the biggest youtubers don't really care they don't really care about anything but their bottom line and their popularity they might have lost sight of the goal or the vision or why we're all here and I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm a virtuous man I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm infallible because I am NOT I'm human just like everybody else but I at least have enough common sense to ask modders about weird shit like this. Thanks for wasting time with me if you stuck around this long. I apologize for the video. Time as it wasn't condensed enough. And uh, adios pachachos, godspeed, and thank you to all the modders who still frequent my page and give me a reason to even play Bethesda games anymore. It's because of guys like you and girls. Otherwise, I wouldn't touch Fallout 4 anymore. <laughs> Oh, Chuchi. Oh, God. Chuchi, Chuchi. 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 Hold on. Why don't you let me get some video, huh? No. Chuchi. Come back here. Shit. I'm gonna have to get that special choker for you. you little piece of shit. Here we go again. Chuchi. Chuchi. Let me get something from Poss. You don't want to see this.